YouTube. Like I promised you, we're going to do a six month review uh, inside the car this time. But you know, before we start, how about we talk about where the car came from, the beginning of the 991 generation GT3 RS. So here's a little feature from Porsche about what the car could do and what it's about. And then we'll talk more once we get inside the car. Okay, peace. Let's talk. What does it like? Well, it's everything that you think it should be. It's, um, we'll just get started. Car's been properly warmed up. So let's go. Um, the car is, first of all, when, you, when I first got it, I was afraid, I didn't, not that I was afraid to drive it, but I didn't understand what it was. I thought that um, I could drive it like my Tesla and that driving it the way I drive my Tesla would got me arrested. So I had to change how I did that. So then I said, okay, let me try to drive it more spiritually. And I did. And, um, one of the things I learned is that, um, I need to use the nose lift right quick, is that 
even judging it spiritually, I didn't really understand how it worked. You know, ultimately, you know, you think that the, um, you know, I'm not even going to try to go out here right now with these cars. Ultimately, you know, you would think that, you know, you get in the car immediately and drive it like you have, like you have no sense. And with a car like this, that's an easy way to get yourself killed. So that wasn't going to work. So I figured, you know, um, let me learn a little bit. So it took me a few months to kind of get comfortable with driving it, especially driving it the right way. Nose look down. All right. Let me open up, close the windows. So then, and I hope no, this is gonna be loud enough for me to talk and for you guys to hear it. But the car is really loud. So, you know, I have to short shift because I can't talk over the over the engine. So, you know, driving the car at speed when you first get a supercar like this, you're not going to be an expert. You know, I'm, I, I thought I was going to, you know, enjoy it. And at first, it was kind of awkward. You know, um, it rattles, it pings, it pops, and you know. Uh, first thing I did was like got it tuned up and you know got it you know boiler wheels tires and balance and everything ready to go and um, you know I had the opportunity as you saw in a previous video where I got a chance to take it to the mountains and I'll show you some footage here and that was the first time I really got a chance to really understand what this car could do and ultimately this car can do way more than I can do on the street just way more um, the handling, the speed, it can just fly out, fly. And it's not immune to stupidity, but the car has more capabilities than most, my local track at uh, Atlanta, Motorsport, uh, Atlanta Motorsports Park, it has more capability on the street. <laughs> the only place I think my, this car would be comfortable is Road Atlanta. And that just goes to the whole cliche race car for the street, because technically it is. So, as far as, you know, drivability, it's perfectly fine. Um, uh, there are so many <laughs> things this car could do on the street uh, or on the highway, <laughs> and I'm not going to talk about that. But the car is unbelievable. Um, what else do I want to talk to you guys about? Uh, maintenance is 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 a problem. Um, like I said, I had those issues with the windshield, the tire, um, the t overall tune-up, and everything. That was uh, five thousand dollars. I mean, there was some serious costs associated with buying this car, but you know, ultimately, it's all worth it. Um, the attention that it gathers is perfectly fine with me too. I mean, it's it's orange, <laughs> so you're gonna get everything that comes with driving an orange car. Um, but, you know, it's one thing to have, but it's another thing to just achieve it. And I think that that's the most important thing is that when you achieve your dream car, that is something that's not only just a personal accomplishment, but it's something that, you know, you should really, really feel good about yourself. Um, and um, it's a very, very big blessing to have this in my life. And I, you know, am very, very grateful to have it. Um, but the um, overall ownership experience has been great. Um, what I learned when I was um, in the mountains is that I don't have to be afraid of the car. As it gives me a thump in the butt on that two, three upshift, I don't have to be afraid of it. It will take care of me as long as I take care of it. It definitely always when you go to seven. It definitely always wants to go faster than you're willing to go. It's angry all the time. I was telling a friend of mine uh, the other night that, you know, the car is kind of just sitting there just growling at you, you know, telling you, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's always ready to fight. And um, I wonder with other 911s if that's the case. I don't know if a turbo has that same personality or a GTS or a Carrera S or a Carrera 4S or Targa. You know, this car, hell, I don't even know if a GT2 
is this eager to fight. But this car, RS, is, they are hardwired to, to go. It's kind of like a Greyhound, you know? Um, so, would I buy another uh, RS? Absolutely. Um, the only thing that I probably would have preferred over this was like a 992 Touring. And unfortunately, I couldn't get a, a lot for that. Because I think this powertrain with the manual would be fantastic. Um, I'm not really concerned about the, the speed, even though having this PDK is fantastic as well. But, you know, my overall ethos would be like a manual, you know. But this car, you know, is super duper racer boy. I got the cage and everything like that. And that's my, that's who I really am. So I don't mind. But if I had to, I'd probably add a GT3 Touring to this and then I could, I would just stop. Or maybe a 911 R and I would just stop. But um, this is a lot of car. <laughs> just like uh, my guy Bruce told me, it's a lot of car and um, it's a handful. But, you know, if you respect it, just like, a, you know, I work in kitchens, if you respect the, um, respect the knives, you won't get cut. If you respect the car, you won't get cut and um, that's the beautiful thing about these cars is that you know as you saw in the previous in the opening to this look at all the things that Porsche puts into these products all the technology carbon fiber hood all the things that associated with going fast in this car and you see that as a package it's hard to beat I mean it's really hard to beat I mean this thing is so well engineered hold on Volume. Okay, that was fine. Sorry, that was my favorite part of the road. Okay, 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 okay. <clears throat> As I was saying, the car is fast. <laughs> I was driving modestly. No need for a front camera. <laughs> so, as I was saying, you know, <clears throat> It's a package. It's a combination of wheels, tires, suspension, engine, materials, smacked into a vehicle that has nothing to do with the, with the uh, platform that it's set up on. This is a turbo body, and it has nothing to do with the turbo as far as the behavior. It's not all-wheel drive, it's rear-wheel drive only. The tires are... Um, uh, for the racetrack only you can't drive it when it's really really cold because you'll be driving on ice skates it's completely different than everything coming out of that factory in fact it's made right on the same line as the race cars so and what's interesting about it is that you can tell it's a race car because the bolts for this uh for this um uh roll cage is literally inside the frame. In every GT car, there is these big bolts, two of them on both sides for this, uh, for these um, uh, roll cages. And if you don't believe it, if you have a GT3 RS, lift up the um, carpet in the back behind the seat and you'll see those two bolts. And so it's designed for the, for the uh, roll cage. So that just goes to show you what kind of engineering this company has that they built bolts to secure the roll cage in the cars, just like the race cars. And it's the freakiest thing. I don't know if the 911R does it, but GT3 RS, those bolts are right there in the frame, waiting for you to unscrew them. And that is cool. I mean, that the intent to go fast. Let's just frame it that way. 
the intent to go fast is insane because they already knew what this thing was about, what they were going to make it about. And that is super duper cool. PDK, well, brake squeak. Don't worry about the squeaky brakes, it'll go away when they heat up. Um, wow. Six months. Gas, well, premium, of course. I never let it go below half. Um, I don't know what the gas mileage is, I don't care. Um, I think one time I checked, it was in the 20s. If you drive like you have some sense, um, it is six cylinder. So gas mileage is not a problem. Um, I know that next year I'll probably have to buy some tires, especially in the rear. And I'm not really worried about that. You know, I got a place to get those. Um, you know, obviously, you know, there is always cost of ownership and that's fine. I mean, with a car like this, you got to expect that. But um, it's just a hoot to drive, man. I mean, I wish everybody could experience this. I mean, I remember I was uh, about four or five years ago, I went to um, the Porsche Experience Center and I had actually rode in this on their track. And I thought it was insane. I mean, the thing was taking corners at speeds. I didn't think it was possible. And the guy was just so calm. He was just whipping the car around the little track. And that's when I realized that this car was special. And that's the other thing about this car. You realize while it's sitting down, vibrating, that this car is special. I don't, and then, you know, it's funny. If you're in the cars, you know when a car is special. Um, the first time I sat in a Ford SVT, uh, what was that thing? Oh gosh. Oh, Contour SVT. Special, S2000, special, any GT car, special, any 911, special, Corvette Z06, special, the old ones. I mean, when you're riding in something that is unique, uniquely made, it shows, and it shows in the way it behaves, and it shows in the way it steers. And this car reeks race. And, um, that is something that I think all 911 owners should try it. Just to get a ride in, just to kind of get a sense of it. And I think that once you do, you'll get that bug, seven gear. You'll get that bug, and then you'll start to understand why people like me go nuts over these cars and why the value is so high. Speaking of value, the question everybody wants to know how in the hell did you afford it? Well, as you know, I'm a writer, I'm an author. I have two books out and I'll plug those in the description. And this car was a pretty penny, I'll tell you that. Way over two. But, yeah, the way it is expect, I could probably sell it for a premium, but I never will. Um, I have a fantastic um, money guy that I work with on all my cars. Um, this is a long-term purchase for me. It's something that I don't intend on giving up. Well, giving up, huh, 812 Superfest. For me, you know, it's Portofino. So it's not something I intend on um, selling ever. And um, it's mine. And um, it's something that I plan on building on as far as a, as far as a uh, collection. You know, uh, when you get your dream car, the last thing you want to do is think about trading it in. I know that, you know, some people like to buy things and sell it, buy and sell, but this one is sticking around. So what's next? Um, I don't know what's next. At this point, I don't want to ramble, but, you know, the sky's the limit. Maybe a Ferrari. But right now, I just want to enjoy this. So on that note, I will say goodbye to you guys, and I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and this six-month review, and this will probably be the last uh, piece, of piece of content uh, in long form because um, 
it's getting cold now and uh, as you already know these cars don't do well when it's cold so I might have to uh, take a break for a little while and come up with some more Tesla content of course but as far as 911 it's been a blast and um, thank you so much for the subscribing uh, to my channel and support you know I really appreciate it and please tell other people about it you know um, I'm very very indebted to all 315 of you so far and please let's get that number up more and more and more it's good to see all kinds of people driving ca uh, cars like this and uh, that's one of my goals okay so let's get this uh, subscription numbers up so that I can uh, get out there and review all kinds of cars okay not just my own <laughs> but for now I'm stuck with what I got all right so <clears throat> I'll talk to y'all later peace Thank you for supporting our channel. Please hit the subscribe button for more great content.